Hi, I'm Anthony Marinelli, and this week I decided to take a deep dive into filters. So I wanted to live in the filter. And what did that mean? Well, it meant that I wanted to like look at each filter and then figure out, like cast the filter in a sense, like the way you would cast an actor in a film. What is the personality of this filter? And then I decided, well, let me pair this filter with a synthesizer. And in doing so, I'm creating a new instrument. And then I was able to sort of put a new piece of music together that I don't think would have ever existed if I didn't, you know, set up these limitations. But what they really are is just like being inspired. So I hope you can learn something from this. Try some things out yourself. You don't have to have all the instruments that I have. One synth, one pedal, even a plug-in and a pedal. You can explore this. And I'd love to hear what you come up with. Let me know. Let's take a deep dive now and I'll show you each one of these sounds and how the music was created. I started with the OBX before I did anything. And the reason I chose the OBX is because you can set the tuning to play a chord when you play one note. And it's very easy to do. And I'll show you how I did that and what pedal I paired with it. But first I want you to hear this sound because it's a pretty cool sound. Lots of control, lots of nuances, lots of anomalies, a little bit of saturation, distortion. It's something that if you tried to do it digitally, you would have to cover so much ground because there's so much precision in digital, which is great sometimes, but it's, it's often nice to just plug a pedal in and get all that complication really fast just by turning a knob and then having saturation and, and other things come into play and then psychoacoustic things start happening. And that's what's kind of happening in this sound. So let me show you the starting point. A very simple sound on the OBX. I'm going to bypass the pedal. So, and you hear there's portamento. So here's the basic sound on the OBX. And I'm sweeping a pedal on the OBX. It's the same thing as sweeping the filter. But I don't have to tie up a hand here. I can use my hand to control the two pole filter. It's the Waldorf two pole filter. I love this. There's distortion, different types of distortion. There's drive, there's rectify circuit, and gain. So you can get interesting types of distortion all over the place. And then you also have low pass, band pass, and high pass filter. So quite a lot of um, variety of sound there. So back to how I created that, um, that chord. Press hold and chord, and then design the chord from the bottom C. So if I want a minor 11th chord, I'll press C. G, E flat, that's my bottom triad. And then the color part, it's a polychord, is like playing a G minor seventh chord, but it's really the fifth, the minor seventh, the ninth, and the eleventh. So I add those to the mix. Now when I play the chord, now when I play the note, I get the whole chord. So now I'm basically sweeping an OBX, and it's a nice sound. It's a filter sweep. Okay, I have a mono pedal, so what can I do to make this sound interesting? Well, what I can do, I have two filters, so I have the signal going into the two pole, and then I have also the signal coming straight out of the OBX. So we can hear the OBX sweep, and I'll engage the two pole now, and the two pole sweep. I'm sweeping the two pole now. And now I'm sweeping the OBX. That's the OBX. And here's the two pole. Lots of interesting variety in there. One of the other things that's really interesting about the sound is I'm taking an output from my Dr. Click that is an envelope at the rate of the click coming from the DAW. So I'm able to double time that, triple time, quadruple time, or even subdivide. So I can create rhythms that will modulate this two-pole filter just by running a cable from that envelope out into the cutoff frequency of the filter. So you can hear that. 
And that rhythm is the click from the DAW sending an envelope to the two pole. So if I unplug this, it's gone. Simple as that. So another sort of interesting complexity. And if I go to the doctor click and I want to increase the rate, I can double time it or, you know, like I was saying, create different, different sorts of rhythms and create polyrhythms or whatever. But in this piece, all I need was a very simple, I wanted to create like a sweep. I wanted to free my hands up so I wouldn't have to play this, you know, minor 11th chord all over the place. And then I, my hands aren't free, so I can't, I can't turn knobs. This way I could play the keyboard and sweep the OBX with my foot and sweep the two pole filter with my hand. And here we go. By pairing a pedal with this synthesizer, create a new instrument. And you sort of learn how to play it like you would learn how to play, you know, a clarinet or whatever. Not quite that hard. But in doing so, it takes you somewhere because I'm experimenting and I'm feeling something different and the sound is changing. And it's not the same old thing where you're just like calling up a preset and turning a filter knob, right? You're going to be inspired in a different kind of way. And, and getting these complicated sort of musical um, anomalies with a very simple signal path, more or less. So highly recommend it. Try it out at home. And also splitting your signal, taking a mono source and splitting it out um, to two sides. And then you have things operating against each other. Also getting sort of pan phantom panning effects is quite interesting. So let's move on to another one. This is the, the chord sound from the um, Oberheim OBX. So let's take a look at the melody sound. I chose to pair the Mini Moog with a Korg Mr. Multi, which I can't wait to show you. But the melody sound went something like this. So the way I got that effect was Minimo going into Mr. Multi. Very unusual pedal, one of my favorites. You can choose between phase wah or double wah. I chose double wah and I put it in pedal mode. Auto mode gives you um, a sine wave. So this way I'm in total control of the sound by moving the pedal up and down. But what happens with the sound, as you'll hear, it's not like sweeping a filter. You're always hearing the frequencies, but it's almost like a phase shift that's going on inside there. And there's also a wah effect. So there's a little bit of wah resonance, but you see the Mini Moog has no resonance. It's just a wide open filter. And I just, I trimmed the filter down a little bit, but it's just sitting there as a static waveform. And it's just, um, just a sawtooth, one sawtooth wave, but it's very expressive. And then we put some delay and reverb on it, which you can hear when I do these sweeps. And it allows me to be expressive with the wheel and play the notes on the keys because I wouldn't be able to like to sweep a filter. So this is the great reason to have an external filter. If you're going to be using the wheel on the Mini Moog, um, I don't have a joystick, so I'm not doing two, you know, um, I'm not controlling two parameters at the same time. I'm just controlling vibrato and this sort of wah phase shift effect. And you get a very expressive melody that way. Let's move on to the next one. So I'm really excited to show you how this bass sound is formulated. I started with a nice solid two oscillator bass sound, pulse width mod, and a sawtooth. Let's throw in some Euro rack. It's an impersonation of the PS3100, which is a an amazing vintage synthesizer made by Korg that has these resonating filters. And this is a very close approximation of it, but I like this module a lot because it makes the sound move in multiple ways. There's three different um, resonances and I can control it with a sine wave and I can sweep it, but it gives me the option to um, use other modulation sources and bring them in. And it allows you to modulate 
any of the um, filter frequencies and the resonances. So I want you to hear the sound again dry. Now I want you to hear the sound going through the triple Vactrol resonators. So there's some movement. But what often happens with pedals is there's a certain loss of high frequency and you gain all this middle movement and richness of harmonics. Well, you know, when you're working with a DAW, you're going to a lot of times just pull up a plug in and it's going to be stereo. So then you end up having the effect on both sides. Well, I don't have that luxury, but I think I actually get a benefit from having the straight signal on one side and the affected signal on the other. And here's the benefit. When I put them together, if you listen carefully, you'll hear a phantom panning effect. And this is because harmonics that are being created by the vectoral resonators on one side are shifting in and out. So there's volume differences and they phase and they create certain cancellations with signals that are apparently coming from the left speaker. So you're getting these sort of, it's a perception thing, but cancellation of frequencies on the left side and cancellation of frequencies on the right side. So you get this sort of phantom panning effect that happens where if I just used the resonators or I just used the straight signal, I'm not going to get that movement. So one of the added benefits. So I realized that and I decided to use this sound in very specific moments and to just sort of get a dimension. And then, you know, I don't have to put as much reverb on the sound too because I'm getting dimensionality out of the sound. And by not putting as much reverb, I can keep it forward if I want to. I can always put reverb on it and set it back in the mix. But this gives me some depth, almost like a natural small room kind of depth to the sound. So there's a lot going on, but it's simple. And that's what I like. When you introduce these external devices, you can create complexities in a very simple way. One pedal adds all these different um, perceptions of the sound down the road. So that's the base. Let's move on to another one. So I decided to use the Jupiter for my bass sound, but it's not the heavy bass sound. It's not like the contrabass sound, if you think in orchestral terms. It's the cello sound. And I went for kind of like a pizzicato cello sound. But I wanted it sequenced and because I wanted to just use an arpeggiator, sort of, you know, to, to change the harmony and then just have it pick off notes, you know, perfectly in time. So this is one of those examples where I was able to split the sound. So I take the left side and go into this Sub Decay Prometheus DLX Deluxe Resonant Filter. There's a lot of names to this filter, but it's a really great filter. It's really clean and it has a nice range of sweep and it has also three modes, low pass, band pass, high pass. It's an envelope follower, lots of waveforms, and you can also put it in, man in manual mode, which is what I did. So in manual mode, I was able to uh, sweep control the, the rate of a sine wave sweeping the filter. So it's very simple in that way. But as I was saying, the left side goes into the filter, the right side is clean, and then both sides go into this dimension C chorus, which I kind of have living on the end of my Roland Jupiter 8 because I like Junos and they have choruses on them. So this kind of gives me that effect. And when it's not engaged, it is true bypass. So it just, you know, puts the signal through. But a lot of times I'll bring it in on pads, but I am bringing it in on this because it's kind of like a cello section. So I have like a chorusy sound. So I'll let you hear exactly like what it sounds like in the music. So you hear that it's eighth notes and it's gonna play the chord that I play on the keyboard and it's arpeggiating it. Very simple. So I said I used minor seventh chords but what, what's happening is in, in the bass, I stay simple. I just use basic triads marking um, the outline of the foundation of the chord. And then in the upper register, I'll use the 7th, ninth, sometimes the 11th 
to give color, but I, you, I don't use them down low, so there's a strong foundation. But the fun part is you can hear what it sounds like without the pedal. There's some pulse with mod, and here's without the chorus. Now it sounds like one cello. So this gives me a little bit more richness. That's a little thicker. I'm just increasing the amount of chorus, if you can't see that. And then the filter. And let me show you what it sounds like. That's what the rate increased. So I have a gentle sweep on it. And okay, so why am I using a filter pedal on a Jupiter 8 that has a filter? Well, I'm using it in bandpass mode. So I'm able to sort of get, you know, more like an MS-20, how you have a low pass filter and a high pass filter, so you can kind of get a bandpass filter out of it. And it, you get a lot more of like interesting middle things going on in the sound and resonance in the middle of the sound not just on the top and the bottom when you're sweeping a high pass or a low pass. So this sound um, plays eighth notes in the beginning, but then as the piece increases, well, how am I clocking it? Let's talk about that. I'm taking a click from my DAW and I run it into a doctor click. Why do I do that? Because I could just take the click and go directly into the arpeggiator, you know, trigger input and be perfectly fine, but then it would just be quarter notes. And you can adjust the, the notes uh, value on the back of the Jupiter 8. But when I use the Dr. Click on the face, I can change the note values very quickly in real time in the music. So when I get to the minor seventh chord section, I can make it sweep over four octaves and go over to the Dr. Click and increase the rate. So you hear it sweeping over more range. And what I mean by that is, here's where I was over two octaves. Over four octaves. And the beginning, I'll drop the doctor click back down. Sweeping over two octaves at an eighth note rate. So this formulated my pizzicato um, cello bass. On to the next one. Let me show you what we can do with a clavinet pianet. So first of all, it's an unusual instrument because it's a clavinet that also has another sort of Fender Rhodesy kind of piano that plays at the same time when you play a key. So I was able to split them in stereo, and in this case, I have a stereo filter that I'm using, and it is the Erica Synths Acid Box 3. Really great filter. Um, you have a bandpass and a low pass filter capability with it, but it's stereo, and I quite like it, and it has some nice LFO options, and it also has a clock divider, so you can quickly get duplicate like um, um, rhythms that are in the same kind of meter, but like double timed and quadruple timed, uh, and envelope follower as well. So it's a great um, stereo filter, and I use it a lot to process stereo synths. So I run the clavinet on one side and the pianet on the other side, and there's some delay, and I'll let you hear what the part sounds like. Very simple. And that's my ostinato. And it's acting kind of like having a piano and a celeste or something like that, if you're talking in orchestral terms. So I'm able to play the melody over this sort of ostinato. And then you heard the, the pizzicato cello part that was coming out of the Jupiter 8 supporting it underneath. So it's basically a little bit of a trio that starts out and then the melody's on top on the mini mode. So that's how I kind of designed the front of this um, song. And I just wanted you to see how we were able to use a stereo filter pedal in this case. And you get quite a lot of good, you know, and if I hit it hard, you really get the distortion. But if I hit it softly, 
But there's always just a little bit of like filth, for lack of a better word. But we like it. It gives the sound life. And, and if you were to get up close to um, a lot of orchestral instruments, you'll hear that there's a lot of anomalies and little uh, distortions. You know, if you try to mic an acoustic instrument up too closely, you'll really hear it. But it adds to the character of the sound. And I think synthesizers sort of lack those things. So giving a little bit of dirt, you know, to the sound, I think, helps a lot. It makes it sound more organic and it's really fun to play. So that's the ostinato figure in this piece. Let's move on to another one. If you like what you see in these videos, please like and subscribe. We want to keep doing more. It really helps us out. And please feel free to add your thoughts in the comments because we read them and it helps us um, know how it's coming across. So I'd like to move on to the last part of the video, which is the Moog modular. And you know what? I just used the Moog filter because I thought it was good enough. So it's this 904A. It's a vintage Moog filter. It's not a reissue and it sounds great. So I just added some kind of a motor. Um, simple, effective. Now it's in 3-4 against a 4-4 part. So the reason I did that is to, so it isn't so predictable. I sort of created like a polyrhythm and it aligns every three bars instead of every four bars. And then I have some portamento on the sound. You can hear a little bit of it. Um, no portamento. Portamento. So there's a little bit of slide and I'm using three oscillators in unison. And I have some pulse width modulation coming from this low frequency oscillator. I mean, it's really not that daunting to understand. If you understand all the things, the principles we've been talking about on the videos, you can understand this is an oscillator. So I put it in low frequency and I plug it into pulse width where it says pulse width here. And now I have pulse width modulation at the rate of the low frequency oscillator right here. And I'm using a mixer to take the rectangle waves, which are pulse waves, forms of square waves, into the mixer. So I have three of them. And then I just take that output and I follow the chord right into the filter, out of the filter, into a VCA, out of the VCA, into this nice four channel mixer. And I send it out. I like to run this box in quad. Um, it's kind of designed for that. That was a big thing in the late 60s and early 70s. And I'll be doing more things and I'll, I'll really show you what this baby can do, especially in quad. And then there's a nice mastering um, bass and treble sort of EQ on here. So, and I'm not really using it, but if you just want to hear it for fun, you can hear it. So that's no bass and full treble. Here's no treble and full bass. So I can crank up the sizzle and neutralize the bass. Or we can go full out and you'll hear me add bass. Nice thump in there, especially down low. It was uh, a little bit scary to have to write a piece of music only using minor seventh chords, but it works quite well. I think I'm gonna write another piece of music maybe using only major seventh chords and I'll run that by you. And also, you know, forcing myself to put an outside filter pedal and everything um, it was quite fun because it took me into a kind of different realms and whatever I wrote, like I wrote a sketch, I was able to um, realize it but then expand it because, you know, if the sounds needed more time to express the beauty of what they're doing, then I would just like add more bars and let them do it. But I still worked within a basic sketch, so I like the format. Pair a pedal with a, a synthesizer, consider it like an instrument, like bass, drums, guitar, so you have like a synth and a pedal, a synth and a pedal, even if you have plugins, you can still think the same way. And you create your set of instruments, get a sketch going so you have some music, and then you can change it from there and let it evolve, let it fly. So 
Hope you enjoyed this one. I really did enjoy it, and I'm looking forward to doing more videos like this in the future where we can mix in some music and some interesting techniques that are even new to me. Looking forward to seeing you next time.